Good morning. Happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully you're all having a wonderful Monday. For those of you who are in the U.S., we have a busy week ahead. It's the week of the election. So definitely in the markets, we've got some volatility ahead of us. We've already had some volatility last week with COVID, the election. So depending on the outcome, depending on how quickly we know the results, I'm sure there's going to be lots of activity in the market. So going to be very interesting to see. Um, I'm very interested to see what happens if we do not know the results right away. Um, really, the last time that we haven't known the results, I would say pretty much the night of the election was uh, with Al Gore versus George W. Bush. I remember that even though I was very, very little at the time. Uh, that one, it was a little bit of time. You know, hopefully we don't have to go through some type of process like that because I'm sure people are going to get a little bit heated as they already are now, but it'd be interesting. And so obviously, you know, with the financial markets like this, uh, kind of an interesting time to do this portfolio optimization series. I'm sure some people might find this useful. In our previous video, we talked about the Monte Carlo simulation. So Basically, we were doing the inefficient way of finding the optimal values in order to say, hey, this is the portfolio that will give you the best Sharpe ratio, and this is the portfolio that will give you the best uh, or the lowest volatility. So, you know, we've seen, you know, it works. There's nothing wrong with a Monte Carlo simulation, but we can obviously see there's a drawback. The biggest drawback being that the number of iterations you want to run, the longer it's going to take. And so obviously, if you're somebody who has a very large data set and would want to do this over many, many iterations, it would be nice if we could do it in an efficient manner, so a more efficient manner. So that's what we're going to be talking about in, I believe, probably not this video, but ultimately we're going to be building some of the framework in order to do that. Um, additionally, I did want to show you one little thing before we go into that part of the video, and that is actually plotting the results of this particular uh, run up here. So this is just kind of nice if visually you want to uh, see the results of the outcome. So we're going to recreate this chart right here. So the first thing that we need to do is anytime we want to uh, see this inside of our inside of our little notebook, we need to do matplotlib with the percentage sign in front and then space inline. So this will be allowing us to see the result. And then from here, uh, we're going to plot the data, plot, -y, <laughs> plot the data on a scatter plot. OK, so we're going to do a scatter plot. So we're going to do plat, plat, I don't know why I said plat, plot, um, scatter. And then with a scatter plot, we're going to have a y axis. And then from here, we're going to do simulations DF. We're going to take the simulations DF on our Y axis. We want to have the returns. And then on our X axis, we're going to do again the simulations DF. In this situation, we're going to do the volatility. So we're doing this comparison between returns and volatility. And then for kind of our values, we're going to be giving the sharp ratio. So we're going to do simulations DF sharp ratio. Now, for those of you who do not remember, keep in mind the simulations DF is simply what we ran up here when we were running our simulation. We didn't do a ton of simulations just because I didn't want people there waiting the entire time I was doing it, but we only did, I think, like 3,000 and it didn't take that long. We also need to make sure our plot has uh, some color to it. So we're going to do red, yellow, blue, and you got your C map. So that is that particular uh, scatter plot. And then additionally, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving our plot uh, some components to it. So we're going to give the plot some titles, titles and axis labels. OK, so we're going to do plot title and then it's going to be portfolio returns versus risk, something like that. We're going to do plot color bar. So the color bar is right over here. It's kind of cut off, as you can see, but it's giving us the sharp ratio. So it's going to give us the sharp ratio uh, intensity aspect of it. And we'll say that it's going to be the sharp ratio. And then from here, we're going to do plot X label 
that's going to equal the standard deviation. That's really our risk measure. And then our Y label is going to be our returns. Now, I do want to call out two very specific points on my chart. I want to call out the portfolio that gives us the highest returns, but ideally, it would, well, not ideally, but it's kind of expected it's going to have more standard deviation. And then additionally, the one with the lowest volatility. And then this one's also kind of give, um, conveying that idea that, hey, as you have less volatility, that's fine. Keep in mind, though, your returns are going to be lower. Not necessarily a bad thing. It just it's kind of this relationship that we're trying to highlight for somebody. So we're going to pl uh, plot the max sharp ratio using a red star. A red star. So we're going to do another scatter plot. So they're kind of going to like sit on top of each other. And so we're going to do max sharp ratio one. So that's going to be our Y max sharp ratio. Uh, this one is going to be zero. And then from here, the marker, this you're, you're just going to have to look it up. That's just one of those things I would never expect anybody to <laughs> remember all these values. But the marker for a star is five comma one comma zero color. We'll make this one red. And then finally, I think S is like the intensity of it, if I remember correctly. And then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it for the um, the min volatility. So we'll say min uh, volatility, volatility using a blue star. And then this one, min volatility, min volatility. And then it's going to be that we're going to change this to blue. And then finally, we have enough, we can uh, finally show the plot. And so we're going to say plot, period, we're gonna call that show method. Okay, and then again, I have to run everything again, obviously, because um, run cells above. Sure, let's do that. <laughs> Did it run? Oh, no, it's running right now. There it goes. Ba -ba -bum. There we go. Perfect. And then I'm going to run this. OK, so we definitely have some more divergence, as you can kind of see. But you can uh, tell that we basically have what I guess would be considered our optimal results. So this would be, again, a nice way of just showing it to the user. So that way they can easily tell like, hey, this is what uh, we got and everything along that nature. So very interesting. You know, it, it's one of those things where just it helps kind of, at least in my opinion, drive home an idea that's like, OK, so as I get more returns, I'm going to take on more risk. As I take on less risk, I'm going to get less returns. So again, I think visually that just says a thousand different words all at once. That's why I love visuals they are super, super helpful. And in my opinion, they <laughs> basically capture nine times the information and uh, paragraph of information sometimes. OK, so now that we have plotted it, we're going to move on to the next portion of the series, which is uh, optimizing a portfolio. We're going to see it to do it in a more efficient fashion. So this is going to be using the uh, SciPy optimization module. So with this one, what we're going to be doing is defining some metrics that will help us optimize our particular portfolio and each of these functions are going to do different things. So one might just simply grab a metric uh, array from uh, a massive list. One might have a constraint, so it might help our optimization function define our constraint saying, hey, this is what has to happen in order for us to uh, be able to optimize it. So it's constrained by this requirement. And then additionally, we can do things like calculate uh, different metrics and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to be defining some functions that we're gonna, going to pass through the optimization module. So the first function that we're going to do is we're going to create one called get metrics. Now, this one hopefully gives you a little bit of an idea of what's going to be going on. But all it's going to do is it's going to get some uh, weights 
from our particular uh, list. That's basically kind of how we want to do it. So we're going to call uh, it get metrics. It's going to have one argument. It's going to be called weights, which is supposed to be a list. And then it's going to return a NumPy array. Now from here, we're going to convert the weights to a NumPy array. So we're going to say weights equals NumPy array pass through those weights. OK, so that's the first thing. We're then going to calculate the returns. So uh, just like the previous one, we have to annualize them. So we're going to do NumPy sum log return. We're going to do mean just like that. And then we're going to do uh, weights. And then we're going to also uh, annualize them. So 252, just like that. And then <clears throat> what we're also going to do is we're going to uh, calculate the volatility like we've done before. So you can kind of see here this get metrics is calculating the different ones for us and it's going to return a little array that we can then pass through the optimization function. So we're going to do mp dot weights. We're going to transpose those weights and then we are going to do uh, numpy dot log return and then we're going to do the covariance times 252 and then from here we're going to do again weights again and then that's our volatility again hopefully nothing too foreign at this point we've done this over two videos now so hopefully all this looks very familiar we're just again structuring it a little bit different calculate the sharp ratio uh sharp ratio equals the return will minus one percent divided by the volatility, so something like that. We'll say the risk-free rate is like 1%. Again, you could adjust this, you could make it a, a standard one as well. And then from here, we need to return a NumPy array back from the function. And what we'll do is we'll pass through a list of the metrics and then convert that to a NumPy array, make it nice and simple. Then from here, we're gonna do another function called Grab negative, negative, sharp. So we're gonna do negative sharp. And then from here, it's gonna have one argument. Again, this is also going to be a list. This is also going to return a NumPy array back to us. Oh, not an S at the end, we want A. Uh, with this one, it's return get metrics. So we're gonna call that get metrics one. Uh, we're going to pass through the weights and then we're going to do two minus one. So we want to uh, basically define a negative sharp ratio. So some, some people kind of ask, like, why are we trying to do a negative sharp ratio? So the goal is we're going to be using this particular metric as what we want to minimize to. Right. And so um, there's a couple different ways you can kind of think about this. Let me see if I have. A little bit of a note here. Where is it? Negative sharp. OK, so the second function is the negative sharp function, which is used as a minimization function. The minimization function is used to help the to help find the values which results in the lowest sharp ratio. In SciPy's optimized function, there is no maximize. So as an objective function, you need to pass something that should be minimized. So with this one, uh, because we cannot find a maximum sharp ratio, what we're going to do is we're going to find the lowest negative sharp ratio. So this is kind of like a reverse trick where we're, we're tricking it a little bit. We're saying like, oh, we want the lowest negative sharp ratio. So we're minimizing that. But really, in essence, what we're doing is we're kind of grabbing the maximum one. So a little bit of a trickery there. But that's kind of how we have to work around when we're using the SciPy optimization. And that's just simply because there is no maximize. There's a minimize. So we kind of have to flip it on its head and say, wait a minute, let's minimize the negative sharp ratio, because really, in essence, we're saying like, oh, that's going to be like our best portfolio. <laughs> right. Interesting. And then next, we're going to do a grab volatility function. Uh, this one, again, is going to have some weights. <clears throat> we're going to do list. And then again, it's going to be. A NumPy array. This one is going to be return get metrics weights 
this one we want the first one or the second one i always forget about that and this one we don't need to do any adjustment and then next we're going to have our check check sum function what this is going to do is it's going to take our weights and make sure that they do not exceed 100%. Why do we do this? Keep in mind, what have we been talking about? You cannot have more than 100% of your portfolio allocated. <laughs> so you can have 100%, but you cannot have 110%. Uh, I would love that, I would love free money, but unfortunately life is not that fun with me. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna kind of cut off the video here, and then in our next video, we are going to work specifically with the SciPy module, and we're going to walk through the optimization process and what that looks like. So at this point, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you in the next video.